underdogs. The name itself reeks of a non-confirmist. Web of Chavhan, like many of us, video gaming ke us door mein bada hua, jab mobile gaming a growing form of entertainment tha. Aur bas, that was the beginning of a new journey. The adventures of an underdog. Growing up in Bandu, a suburb in Mumbai, Webhav always had the knack of designing games. But middle class family se hone ki wajay se, apne sapno ko follow karna itna aasaan nahi tha. It was a bumpy ride that I would have regretted if I didn't take it. His family saw his entrepreneurial skills at a very young age. I remember incidents when he was in 5th standard. There used to be some photographs of cricketers. Uh, Dravid, Sachin Tendulkar. He used to buy it uh, at 25 paise from some store and then he used to go and sell it to his friends at 1 rupee. So that was one incident where you know, uh, we saw his uh, entrepreneur skills. Engineering passed and he also got a job. Fortunately, I got my first job in India Games. Unfortunately, due to recession, I got laid off. Being from a middle class family, I had to support the family and I got a job in IT. Again, due to recession, my layoff was gone. I didn't want to leave that job, but I didn't want to leave that blame on me. It was really okay at home that if the company left it, then what can we do? Initially, they always wanted to do a job in IT, but I didn't pass in interviews. Just because my heart never put it in IT. I was not able to convince them that I have to go to gaming. So, I was stuck in between and I was very much depressed. But eventually, my parents took me to the house. My father caught me when I was crying in one corner of my house. So, my father then realized that yes, he should give me one chance at least to try. Dad motivation was very helpful and within three days, I got my first job as a game designer in Games to Win. Finally, Webhav found his path. Badi shiddat se game development ki bari kiya, usne apne teen saal ke salaried career mein sikhi. Mainne apne aap ke liye ek target set kar liya tha that I'll start my own company at the age of 26. I learned the art of making games, but there was an exposure which was missing. So I switched to Hangama. Hangama mein mujhe kafi exposure mila. I realized that this was a time because the clock was ticking and I made some promises to myself because I wanted to start my own company at 26 and this was 26. But now he didn't want to do any work under him. This puppy wanted to be unleashed. HR asked me, he was very shocked at the resignation because the appraisals were going on. So he asked me, which company do you want to join? I said, अब कोई कंपनी जॉइन नहीं करनी। Now I'm working for myself, and that day I gave her my first business card. Webhav named his newfound company Underdogs Gaming Studio. Boxing match में तब मजा नहीं आता जब दोनों चैम्पियंस होते हैं। Boxing match में तब मजा आता है जब एक चैम्पियन होता है और दूसरा रास्ते से उठाया हुआ एक ऐसा बंदा होता है जिसमें जिद होती है जीतने की और वो पैशन होता है। Match जब शुरू होता ह because they believe that the champion is going to win. But inside, they hope that the underdog wins. Jaldi underdogs ko teen aur members mile. Sankesh Mori, Amit Aware, aur Abhishek Vang Khede. I got my friend from his friend. When I reached there, I had to find a half hour to find an address. I got up and started a job. And there was a box of 4x4. There was a box in 4x4, and I was a little shocked. I was like, I have to work here. So I gave it to him. He took it to the CV. He took it to the side. He said, I don't need it. You go and tell me. So I understood that this is where I have to work. But how many people will eat only food? Now they wanted a seven-course meal. They wanted a shawrat. Fame. Shit, shit. We need something big, guys. Identifying the latest trends in mobile gaming, underdogs made their grand entry on the world stage with their own game, Skate Lander. So we wanted to make a good quality global title, और हमने एक game बनाया Skate Lander in just two and a half months. We published that game. It got featured in in 130 countries on Apple App Store. 
वी गॉट नॉमिनेटेड एज अ बेस्ट गेम आर्ट एट कैजुअल कनेक्ट सिंगापुर वहाँ पे हमको 10 अलग अलग इंटरनेशनल पब्लिशर्स डील मिले थे वी चोज वन सो बेसिकली वी व द फर्स्ट इंडियन इंडी गेम डेवलपमेंट स्टूडियो हु गॉट एन इंटरनेशनल पब्लिशर डील चार बाय चार के ऑफिस से एक कमर्शियल बिजनेस स्पेस तक दीज अंडर डॉग्स हैव प्रूवन दे मेटल इनकी जिंदगी में कई उतार चढ़ाव आए पर सबसे जरूरी बात तो ये थी कि दे ऑलवेज गॉट बैक अप दीज एप एंटरप्रेन्योर्स आर डेफिनेटली द डार्क हॉर्सेस ऑफ द इंडियन इंडी गेमिंग सिनेरियो Good morning, all of you, and welcome to this online Q and A session on the gaming industry. Uh, today, we have amongst us a very special game designer, uh, entrepreneur from the industry. Uh, his name is Mr. Vaibhav Zawan, and I think most of you uh, you would have gone through his profile and his uh, website and uh, his work. Uh, so, today's um, session will be like that. First of all, it will be in both Hindi and English, so that everyone can understand it nicely. Uh, the second thing is ki i will introduce the speaker uh, initially thoda sa and then one of our students one of our ey students atharva uh, he will be asking questions to the speaker and uh, us tarike se conversation build up hoti chali jayegi in the end we will also have an open house jisme baki sare students jo hain participants hai wo bhi apne sawal uh, vaibhav se puch sakte hain so without wasting any time let us uh, straight away begin with the session um, so Uh, Vaibhav is uh, an engineer by training, और engineering के दिनों से ही gaming का इतना जुनून था actually बचपन से था uh, और उसके बाद uh, so he was just looking for opportunities to be associated with any kind of gaming industries uh, में कोई भी किस्म का काम मिल जाए and वहाँ से उन्होंने एकदम zero से अपनी शुरुआत कर यहाँ पहुंचे हैं कि अब पिछले uh, कि पिछले अभी नौ सालों से फॉर द लास्ट नाइन इयर्स ही हैज बीन ही हैज फाउंडेड दिस कंपनी कॉल्ड अंडर टॉक्स गेमिंग प्राइवेट लिमिटेड तो उसमें वो सीईओ भी है एंड ही हैज बीन डिजाइनिंग सम वंडरफुल गेम्स तो वैभव वी वेलकम यू टू दिस सेशन नाइस टू हैव यू हर थैंक यू रोशन Uh, so uh, to to go ahead with this session, I would now request Mr. Atharv uh, to uh, to please initiate uh, with our guest speaker today. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, sir. To begin with, uh, can you tell us about uh, Underdogs, the platform that you target? Uh, so I I'll give you a quick uh, background about me and my company. Um, I am a computer graduate. I started. Uh, uh designing games uh, in 2007 uh, so india games was my first company that i started working as a game designer uh, after india games uh, there was a huge recession uh, back in 2008 9 so you know i was jobless for around one and a half years uh, but again found some jobs here and there in it field uh, then again went back to gaming uh, started uh, game designing again from zero uh, started working at uh, games to win as a game designer then shifted shifted to angama uh, as a game producer and the dog started back in 2011 it was started as a single uh, man company uh, but right now uh, we are around 12 people uh, this year we might even scale up to around 18 people um, it's been 9 years we've been making games for b2b and b2c so b2b mein bhi jo clients hote hain uh, we majorly work for uh, फॉर बिगर गेमिंग कंपनीज जो जैसे कंपनीज होते हैं नजारा रिलायंस ये लोग खुद के इंटरनली गेम्स नहीं बनाते दे आउटसोर्स इट टू अस दैट्स वन देन देर आर डिजिटल एजेंसीज हु आर वर्किंग फॉर ब्रांड्स तो अगर कोलगेट को गेम बनाना है तो दे कम टू दैट डिजिटल एजेंसी एंड दैट डिजिटल एजेंसी कम्स टू अस सो दैट्स द सेकेंड टाइप द थर्ड टाइप इज द मूवी प्रोडक्शन हाउसेज सो बॉलीवुड uh movies um when they want to promote their uh, movies into you know via games they come to us to make their uh, games so currently we are working on a game called kooli number 1 uh, which is uh, i think varun dhawan is uh, the lead uh, so we were, so that's the three um uh, domains that we work in um the fourth one is we do gamification so there are bigger companies um which are non gaming uh, firms uh but they just want to convert their boring processes into you know very interesting engagement uh, engaging processes uh so they 
ask us to convert that. Uh, so it's like in the first three sections, we uh, the clients come to us with a solution, uh, but in uh, gamification, they come to us with a problem where we can solve that problem. Uh, so it can be a training process, which is kind of very boring uh, for their um, employees. So we have to convert that into you know very engaging, fun kind of a thing. Uh, and it's, this is completely digital. Uh, that, so this is B2B uh, overall, uh, where we do uh, work for businesses, from business to business. Uh, the second one is B2C, which is uh, making our own games. Uh, so we make our own games. Uh, we have our games on uh, Apple and uh, Google Play. Um, there is uh, one game on Steam also, uh, but um, we never explored much on Steam uh, uh, on PC or consoles. But uh, mobile, we are, we are, we are huge. Uh, so far in the last nine years, we have made more than 200 games, uh, you know, cumulatively for B2B and B2C, uh, which, um, you know, which uh, are across uh, a very broad spectrum of um, uh, Windows phones, Android phones, iOS phones, uh, Blackberry phones, uh, web games and PC games. So that's what uh, Underdogs does. Um, we are currently working on um, hyper casual games, which is, which is a trend right now. And... Uh, we are with uh, one of the biggest uh, international publisher. We are in an exclusive deal with those people. So uh, right now, uh, for the for next six months, we'll be only making games for that particular publisher. So it's kind of exclusive. We're not allowed to work for anybody else. So that's what is happening in Underdogs. Uh, there is any is there any specific reason that why you guys don't target uh, PC platforms like Steam? So the thing is. Um, India is uh, India has a very huge pool of talent. Like they, uh, if you see companies like Rockstars, Ubisoft, um, or any big company who are making games uh, at a triple A level, right? So games like NFS, Forza, um, the artwork that you see in those games uh, is basically outsourced from India. So there are companies like Druva Interactive, there are companies like Lux Digital, there are companies like Prana Studios who uh, make the artwork for these bigger companies. Uh, and these bigger companies for them is very easy because it's cheaper uh, and there is a there is a good amount of talent in India. So if you ask me, um, there is the, the there is no lack of talent in India to create games here, uh, on PC. It's, uh, it's quite easy because it's the same thing. Uh, in fact, making a game on mobile is difficult because you have a lot of limitations in terms of artwork. Uh, but any developer who can make a game on mobile, if he has given complete freedom, he can make a great kick as game on PC because he has no limitations of artwork or you know polygons or tries in, in, in PC. Uh, as a business, why we don't do PC games is because uh, uh, every every category of games, right? Be it mobile game, be it uh, you know OEM games, telco games, every category needs some sort of expertise uh, to create a hit, right? Right now, India is we can genuinely say that India is around five years behind US and China in terms of game development. Right. And we are at a stage where we are learning game development. Um, there was a time when uh, smartphones were introduced back in 2011 and nobody knew how to make games uh, for smartphones. People, uh, the companies who were there uh, back in 2011, there were hardly around 30, 40 companies in India which were into game development. They struggled and they started learning because uh, that was this phase where flash games uh, were, were, you know, becoming outdated and people were people were wanted something to be shifted onto and that is where the uh, tool unity came into place and everybody started using unity you know so that was the phase 2011 12 was the phase jab he, uh, companies started making uh, or experimenting with mobile games uh, so 2013 se leke 2015 tak, that was the phase where everybody was trying to make smaller smaller very small mobile games and 2015 mein then there was a huge hit of indie indie wave uh, which we call uh, independent developers right because teen saal ho chuke the unity ko india mein aake and then uh, everybody knew how to code uh, there were a lot of tutorials out there. People just picked up the tool, started making their own games. So Indie Wave hit back in 2015, and then people started making games uh, 
people who were like single man company or two men company three men company just started uh, you know creating groups and started making games uh, so if you ask me they, it's a graph you know it's a slow progressing graph uh, where we uh, quit flash games web based games then we went into smartphone games then uh, people joined in now uh, independent developers started building their own companies now at this stage there are over 500 companies in india i think in the next 2 to 3 years um, companies like us like independent studios uh, who are not really uh, you know trying to focus on pc right now they will get into that phase uh, because that's how that's how the growth has to be um, uh, there like because um, even at this stage out of 500 companies there might be only 50 companies who know uh how to really really uh you know convert a mobile game into a hit game uh, others are just just trying at this stage so getting uh, onto pc at this stage because pc is also expensive you know it's not very easy to make a pc game uh, because uh, there is a lot of there are a lot of um, uh, things which are involved in that also uh, the marketing promotions and everything because see everybody thinks making a game is 100% of their work but that's just 20% rest 80% is uh, you know doing aso doing promotions marketing user acquisition that the the remaining 80% is not yet explored really well in india by the developers and that is why people are not really experimenting much because they'll end up spending a lot of money uh, with no rois on it uh, well people here who know mobile games and who know how to you know utilize those things they are hammering on mobile they are going ham on mobile and they are trying to make a lot of money out of mobile itself for now once they are very very settled and you know they have uh, financial backups to experiment with games i think there will be more pc games coming out from india uh, can you tell us about your journey of how you started your uh, career in gaming and becoming the founder uh, i i belong to a very middle class family um, so my father used to uh, my father still has a small mechanical workshop it's a very small space um, but back in the, back in 2000 or 1999 i guess uh, he was working with some of his one of his partners who uh, who was about to sell his uh, you know black and white pc and this was way back uh, bef- even before pentium 1 uh, there was a machine called as 486 so it, there was 386 then there was 486 and then there was pentium 1 so uh, that machine was 486 uh, it was a black and white machine which only had uh, 8 mb of ram and a 1.2 gb hard disk that was the configuration of that machine at that time uh, so he got it he got it for me he just thought i'll uh, do a lot of you know tools and uh, programming stuff because i at that time internet was was doing really you know it was at a peak and everybody wanted to get digital uh, so my father thought ki i'll uh, you know experiment with software and get to know digital stuff as well uh to wo aane ke baad uh, i started spending more time on uh, you know on playing games because uh, i never knew that there were there were there were games as such in pcs you know uh, at that time uh, but the guy who sold the machine to my dad had a, had a, had one folder with you know around hundreds of dos games ms dos games the black and white games you know prince of persia one dangerous day and all those kind of games which are very very uh, initial stages of you know gaming at that time uh, so i started uh, i i was totally addicted to all those games i started playing those games uh, and uh, what we did was uh, um i i at that time what happened was i um, i um, my fa- my family wanted to get, uh, get uh, my family wanted me to get into engineering um, but um, uh, i always wanted to make games you know so uh, just because my uh, elder brother was doing engineering i um, i was also forced to you know go to engineering so then what i started doing was i started experimenting with photoshop 3d max maya self learned all the tools myself and wo 6 saal mein uh, in diploma or engineering ke 6 saal mein i always kept on uh, saying this one thing uh, because at that time there was only one company which was very huge and it was india games uh, there were other game companies also like nazara uh, and reliance but they were not as good as uh, india games because india games were 
एक्चुअली मेकिंग वेरी हार्ड कोर गेम्स तो उतना ही पता था सो वॉट आई यूज टू कीप टेलिंग माई सेल्फ एज यू नो that uh, i don't know how i'll get into gaming but everybody in my batch knew that i will land up in gaming because college may be if you still go and see my last benches of my college you know there are all there are these character sketches that i've just uh, made on those benches like people used to uh, do the diagrams of other things and i used to make characters uh, on those benches uh, so i used to keep telling my friends that uh, my only option because at that time two things were the biggest problem internet was not uh, easily accessible and second was if at all it was accessible there was not much of information out there on internet to how to get into gaming you know to mera ek hi solution tha my only resort was i'll go to uh, india games once i'm done with engineering the next day i'll go sit outside india games um jo bhi banda andar se bahar aayega main usko pakdunga aur usko puchunga ki mere ko andar aana hai मेरे को बता कि मैं क्या पढ़ के आऊ ताकि मैं अंदर आ सकूं दैट वाज माय ओनली सॉल्यूशन टू दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ गेटिंग इनटू गेम यू नो सो आई आई ऑन सीइंग दैट थिंग फॉर सिक्स इयर्स एंड फॉर्चुनेटली व्हाट हैपेंड वाज जस्ट बिफोर माय लास्ट paper uh, second last paper of my engineering i saw an ad on uh, internet about india games i wanted to hire a trainee game designer now at that time i really didn't know how what a game designer was theek hai mere ko kuch idea nahi tha domain ke bare mein game designer exactly karta kya hai so i immediately picked up a call i called india games they took my interview uh, on phone and then um, uh, was phone ke interview pe i said so many wrong things i said so many uh, you know uh, everything that i uh, said in that interview was uh, all bullshit because um because they asked me about game designing and i was continuously talking about how how what what game art is how to make art how to make animation and all that stuff so one thing was i uh, i think they they just saw that this guy is very much passionate about getting into gaming even if he doesn't know much stuff about it so they called me for an interview uh, just before my second last exam uh, so a kal mera exam hai aur agle din i was sitting in india games for whole day giving six interviews uh, in india games aur wo interviews ke baad mein you know i got selected at india games as a trainee game designer so fortunately um uh, जो मेरा ड्रीम कंपनी था द कंपनी दैट आई ऑलवेज वांटेड टू गेट इनटू वाज माय फर्स्ट कंपनी टू स्टार्ट माय जॉब एज अ एज अ गेम डिजाइनर दिस इज फॉर्चुनेट फॉर मी बिकॉज उस वक्त पे जब भी गेमिंग का कुछ था ही नहीं देर वाज नो कंपनीज देर वाज ओनली वन कंपनी एंड देन गेटिंग अ जॉब इन दैट कंपनी वाज यूज फॉर मी एंड आई वाज ओनली गाय इन कॉलेज गिविंग माय लास्ट पेपर एंड आई ऑलरेडी हैड अ जॉब so they asked me ki uh, when you when do you want to join okay so my exam was like 5th june was my last exam uh and uh 6th june was my first day at india games so that's how i started so that that's the point uh, uh you know where the actual career started as a game designer uh but then four four months later uh recession hit really bad uh, so all the people who are on probation who are who were trainees they were asked to leave so four months later i was uh, you know thrown out of india games uh after that one and a half year i was jobless because of recession i didn't uh, you know find any any job in it also because i was from computer engineering i thought of going back to uh, it doing programming but i did get it um so after one and a half years i got a got a job which was like a very you know basic uh, programming job um uh, where i used to code uh, for websites um and then in 9 months while i was doing that job what i used to do was i i was very good at programming also <clears throat> because i was from computer background i was good at programming so jo ek jo 9 ghante ka kaam hota tha us company mein i used to finish that in just 1 hour uh, and the remaining 8 hours i used to just open up these game engines like unreal talk 3d and just you know keep uh exploring those engines uh because i always wanted to make games pata nahi tha mujhe kaise karna hai kya karna but i used to you know keep doing that uh no maine baad in that company also no maine baad they asked me to um, uh, put my papers because the recession was so bad that they also fired around 40 people uh on the same day but this time i was not really sad i was much more happier because now i decided that uh i i'll i'll shift back to gaming forever uh, i'm not going back to it 
so I, uh, when I was uh, laid off from that company, I went back to uh, Games to Win. Um, and in Games to Win, also what happened was uh, there was no opportunity at that time. There was no uh, in Games to Win. There was the, the there was no hiring uh, which was going on. Uh, but I just discovered Games to Win as a company uh, which was in Bombay. So I directly went to the company. Uh, I met the reception uh, guy and I told him that I have an interview with uh, the game producer in this company. Um, so the game producer comes and he says, uh, I don't know you and I, I don't have any meeting with you. And I said, I know, but I just want to uh, talk to you for 10 minutes. You know, so I just tried to convince him to talk to me, sit down, talk to me with, uh, with me for 10 minutes. Um, I think that is something that he uh, he really saw. Um, he gave me 10 minutes. I sat with him and I tried to convince him that if he gives me an opportunity in gaming as a game designer, uh, he won't regret it. Um, so I think um, he, uh, he didn't have any opening at that time. Uh, but he gave me a test. I went back. I gave the test. Um, I, I, he gave me a week to you know finish that test. I gave that test, um, and the test was so good that he uh, ended up he ended up hiring me. Uh, so in one week, I started uh, working as a full time game designer at Games to Win, um, and then there was no turning back because Games to Win taught me a lot of things. Games to Win taught me how to make games uh, from you know start to end. Uh, the whole development process, how a game is made. And that was the time when the, you know, um, when the seed of uh, starting underdogs started growing in my head. Uh, because I saw the process, I saw how things work, how I saw how profits are made from, uh, you know, making games. And I decided that uh, in the next two years, I'll be, uh, I'll be starting something of my own, uh, be it, uh, however small it may be, but I'll start off my own. Uh, but there was a problem. Um, I knew how to make games. Um, I had a friend who who wanted to support me in this, uh, but I didn't have enough people who knew me at that time. Uh, so for that very reason, what I did was I quit games to and I went uh, to Hangama. <clears throat> now at that time, Hangama was doing really well. Uh, Hangama was a huge company compared to games to win. Games to win was just, I think, around 100 people. Hangama was uh, 800 people on one floor. So, so I went to Hangama for the only reason that I uh, connect with a lot of people. I'll just I'll just go and network. That was my only objective in Hangama, uh, because uh, what I wanted to do was I, wa I wanted to give myself one year to connect with all the people. Say I 800 people on that floor, and maybe out of those 800, eight people or two people will give me uh, a job when I start uh, doing my own thing. Okay, so that was my only objective. I spent one year. Uh, in Hangama, uh, every time Hangama used to do a lot of celebrity games. So every time, if I didn't have any kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, work in that particular uh, celebrity's game, still I used to go and meet that celebrity. Still I used to go and you know approach people and just uh, introduce myself. So all I did in Hangama was just introduce myself to everybody. Uh, and by the end of you know one year in Hangama. Um, I got that confidence that other people know me and, and a lot of people actually, uh, you know, started telling me that you should, you know, uh, you should just start and uh, make a game for us. Uh, so I, 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 by the time I decided to start, uh, I, ha I already had like around four or five games in my kitty uh, to make like projects which I can take up uh, on my own and build the games for the other people. So I quit Hangama and I started Underdogs. Um, that also happened like very quick. I quit uh, Hangama on 9 September 2011. And 11 September 2011 was the first day at Underdogs. Uh, Underdogs started in a very small space. It was a four by four space. Uh, my father, like I said, has a workshop. Uh, I requested him to give me, uh, you know, a very small space. Uh, his workshop is like a proper mechanical workshop where there is a lot of sounds. There are machines, press and all. Uh, whole uh, you know metal parts lying around uh, so i just put you know four uh, walls in between that uh, workshop um, and i put one table i put a machine onto that and i started underdogs uh, in that very small space um, i quickly started you know um, i realized i realized that um, i two of us were not enough uh, to you know uh, make games um, uh, because the amount of 
gains that we were getting uh, you know we we needed a lot of resources uh, and even before that when i when i decided to start underdogs i had just like one month of uh, time period um, and i approached a company uh, who was ready to give me two games so what i used to do is uh, in that notice period of hangama i used to go to hangama at 9:30 i used to leave hangama at uh, around 5:36 <clears throat> i used to come back home and uh, me and my friend used to work on games uh, safe by you know we used to start at 8 o'clock in the night and we used to go till 4 o'clock in the morning <clears throat> we used to hardly sleep for 2 to 3 hours uh, and then we i used to go back to hangama so that was my cycle for the last uh, one or two months at hangama I went to a local institute and i told them that uh, you know i this is my car um and uh, send me your best guy send me your best student who can you know come uh, i want to give him a job uh, um that time two two of them came to my studio uh, as a as an artist um and i'm very very <coughs> you know proud to say that uh, those two guys who came to me uh, back in 2011 uh, to start as a fresh uh, artists uh, are still with me uh, it's been 9 years Uh, and they are the core integral part of underdogs right now um one heads the artwork and the other one heads the operations uh, and that's something that i really look into people you know that um the the humility and the gratitude because uh seeing the space that i had at that time nobody would ever decide to you know start working there but they st- decided to stick around and you know take it to this level so that was the whole journey uh, that's how it started um, but uh, there was a lot of things happened after that uh, you know in 9 years a lot of ups and downs but yeah we are doing we are doing fine now sir your uh, journey so far really shows that how much you are passionate for games so sir so do you still play games and if so what are your favorite games uh, and genre of games uh, yeah i do do play games i Uh, it's kind of a ritual um where it's like a movie uh, a movie director uh, cannot make good movies if he you know doesn't watch a lot of movies um so it's kind of a ritual it's kind of a homework uh, for us to uh, consistently play games um for me um i'm a huge huge uh, ps4 uh, fan like, like i i do play a lot of ps4 games um um one of the thing is it's it's just it's just the scale that shows that what can be reached um mobile making mobile games um is just you know part of uh, pulling out a, a smaller part of those bigger games and you know converting it into hyper casual or ca- casual scenario uh, but looking at games uh, uh, right now at this stage games like you know uh, GTA FIFA uh, or uh, naughty doxies or whatever games that they make uncharted last of us these are these are these are the kind of games that i love uh, i love storytelling narrative based games uh, one of the things is because uh, i do theater uh, i do marathi theater um, uh, i act and direct um, in marathi plays uh, so i've been doing that for last 10 years uh, and that is something um, because of which i'm more you know intrigued about storytelling um and that is why uh, the reason game that i'm playing is this uh, is just released so i'm just playing that game right now which tells how you know what kind of games are working or uh, the rankings of these games so that's like a 15 minutes job that we have to do every day uh, apart from that just to have fun these are these are the kind of games that i play which are like you know in depth in storytelling and narrative uh, genre Uh, what are the different uh, job types in this industry and uh, what roles do you play in making a game so i'll give you a, 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 a br- you know brief uh, segregation of what our domains are there um if i go into details there are a lot you know there are around 20 30 or profiles or domains in gaming uh, but i would just like to you know to not to confuse uh, people i would just like to keep it a uh, very simple uh i usually categorize categorize these domains broadly into four sectors uh the first one is game design the second is game art the third is game programming and the fourth is uh, game testing uh everything um 
uh, other than these four broad categories is 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 uh, specialization uh, so other i'll just before i get into the details of the four domains i'll just give you the other aspects as well uh, there is uh, something uh, on analytics there is something on revenues uh, you know people there are specifically um, people who just focus on analytics of the games uh, there are people who only focus on the revenues of the games there are people who only focus on the marketing strategies of the games the publishing sections of the games there are a lot of things the aso of the games uh, but these are the things which you cannot learn and get into as a job uh, as a fresher you need to start with these domains and then you know build that expertise and maybe then get into these sections uh, because these are like experienced profiles unless and until you don't know the dynamics of how the game works how the monetization is done and how the analytics work you cannot go to that level where you know you can handle analytics or revenues or asos of the games uh, so broadly these are the two th uh, four things um, and in these four things um uh you, i'll start with uh, with with simple um the first one which is game design uh game design in game design what do you need is uh, is 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 just just the three things um game design firstly i'll tell you what your game designer does game designer if you compare it with the with the movie movie industry is a writer of a, of a movie so his game designer is basically a writer of a game who writes characters who writes stories behind those characters who writes how the game will flow uh, what are the win scenario what are the lose scenarios uh, everything is just documented this guy only writes stuff that's it uh, he never uses any kind of tools to you know uh, create art assets or something people get confused between a game designer and a graphic designer they are completely different a uh, game designer does not uh, make any kind of artwork but he writes about those characters or those uh, art assets okay uh, so that's game designer the important skills may be you know uh, you should be very very uh, good in communication you should be good in visualization you should be good in uh, documentation uh, because documentation is important because you think about a game uh, and that's in your head, but you need to be very, very fluent in, you know, putting your game from your head onto the paper so that everybody reads that document and understands what, uh, what the game is all about. You know, that's why uh, your, your writing skills, your documentation skills should be good. Uh, the, the communication yeah. skills is because you need to, you know, convey uh, it to the team. You need to consistently talk to the artists, the programmers, the testers about what your vision of a game is so you continuously have to communicate with these people the third thing is um, um uh, is is visualization which is obviously uh, you know um, thinking about the game or thinking about the concept and a lot of uh, a lot of aspects of the game uh, so these are the three main skills in a game designer's profile um, also you don't need any kind of qualification for that uh, you just need to you know uh, have these skills um, uh, for an interview or any kind of uh, stuff, you just have to dissect. If you just dissect uh, a game and uh, you know show it to the interviewer, uh, it it's it's kind of helpful for you. Uh, in game art, a uh, game artist basically makes the artwork. So whatever things that a game designer writes in a game, all those art assets that you see, the visual stuff, the three D models, the two D art assets, the animations, everything, those things are created by the artists. Uh, the third thing, uh, the third uh, profile is a game programmer. Uh, the game programmer is uh, the one who codes the games, uh, who uses C sharp, uh, you know, or any kind of programming language to script, use the 3D models that uh, the you know, artists have made and be in touch with game designer to understand what exactly to do with those 3D models and animations and then make games or, and code or script, you know, um, uh, whatever is needed according to the game designer's vision. Um, to be a game programmer, you know, you you would need um, uh, some background on computer science, uh, some background on programming. Uh, it's not necessary as such. Uh, there are people who are not even, you know, 12th uh, uh, past, but they also are game programmers right now uh, because they have good logical analytical skills. They, they know how to code. Uh, but having that kind of background, having computer science or uh, you know engineering background helps a lot 
um, in other aspects of uh, of uh, of your career. Um, and the fourth one is game testing. Game testing usually um, people think it's very easy. I'll keep playing games whole day. That's not the truth. Uh, you know, game testing is not as easy as it looks like. As a game tester, you know what you have to. You but what you end up doing a lot of times is you end up playing the worst level that you don't like or hate for two thousand times. You know because you need to figure out what's wrong with that uh, game that is there any kind of bug in it error you know are uh, doing regression or functional testing on to that particular level uh, so you need to be very patient with that the second thing is you need to have a very uh, detailed eye on whatever you are doing because what happens a lot of times is uh, you end up finding a bug okay uh, and you might have done seven eight different steps to reach that bug uh, you report that bug to the programmer to sort it out. But to sort that bug out, you need to tell the programmer exactly the same steps that you took to bring that bug out. You know, so that is why you need to have a very detailed eye on what you're doing, how you're testing the game. Uh, so the other skill that I uh, am talking about is is we usually refer as reproduction of bug bugs. You know, you should be able to reproduce your bugs, reproduce the bugs that you find. Uh, so these are the four main, you know, domains uh, in gaming in India. Um, if you, and these are all generic, okay. If you go outside India, if you go to the Western countries, you know, just in game designing section, there are 10 different sections that you can specialize in. So you can be a game designer, you can be a level designer, you can be a gameplay designer, you can be a, a you know, environmental designer. There are 10 different um, sub career options in, in Western countries because uh, these are bigger gaming companies who, you know, who focus on specialization. But uh, since India is not that huge right now, making a lot of you know in-depth games so for uh, game design i have heard that uh, you need to have a little you need to have a little bit of knowledge of uh, programming for game designing is that uh, true uh no it's not absolutely uh, wrong um see um having knowledge of every aspect is great um it's not important at all um like if i'm a game designer what i'm and what i'm doing is just uh, you know, writing games, uh, designing stuff, uh, thinking about stories or writing dialogues and a lot of other stuff, which is pre-production. Um, having knowledge of programming helps in game designing is because when, I, when I'm designing something, if I know that technically that is not possible for a programmer, I would not do it. I would not design it. So having knowledge of it is important, uh, but it's not, uh, you know, um, it's not mandatory to you know uh, be a game designer it's uh, it would be helpful for you as a game designer uh, uh, some of the pc games some of uh, the games which you know work on level design so for example if it's a 3d world and you as a game designer have to design the levels as well uh, so most of the times the company allots that job to the game designer so in that case uh, having knowledge of tools is very very important. Uh, say you you if you know Unity, if you know Unreal, uh, you will be given that uh, environment in 3D, and you you will need to you know design those levels, place objects, and you know make it fun. Uh, so having knowledge of those tools is also important. Uh, but knowing programming is not at all necessary. It might help you in long term just to be a good game designer but it's not really important for you or for anybody uh, there are a lot of students who don't know what to do in future they don't know they are really confused between what they should do so what you can tell them that uh, so that um, what can you tell them to help them um see uh, i it's been a year that I also started uh, putting out content on YouTube. So I run a YouTube channel. <clears throat> it's my name uh, only on the channel. But uh, it's been a year that I've been uh, talking to a lot of young people. You know what you should do. Uh, and I keep telling the, uh, the same thing on that channel as well. Uh, 
you need to first figure out your domain you know that's the first thing that you need to understand as an individual you need to figure out see gaming right now 50% of the people who want to get into gaming just want to get into gaming because they think it's fun it's a fad it's a very cool job uh but that will not if that is your intention if if that is your reason to get into gaming just don't do it because it's not easy it's not at all easy unless and until you identify your domain so for example if i think i can make good artwork okay i i you know if i can you know make good models on 3d uh, 3d max or maya or i can paint good stuff on photoshop i can think of becoming a game artist um similarly if i have very very keen interest in coding in programming i can think of going into game programming uh if i you know can visualize stuff if i'm good at these things like or if i want to desperately get into game designing i should polish my skills the skills that i mentioned you know communication or uh, documentation and other stuff so firstly out of all these four things right um you just first you need to figure out what is it that you love what is it that you like because gaming is 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 a, is a is an industry which can be very very uh, regretting like you 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 might land up in gaming and you would regret if you land up in a wrong job in gaming because uh, because right now a lot of people are just confused about it and they they end up doing it uh, i i have few examples when people approached me in my company and they gave interview as a game programmer they they landed up they ended up working as game designers because we realized their potential while we started working on uh, you know with them so so you should not get to that phase you might not meet another me or another of my team members who identified that potential of you know uh, you're good at game designing or you're good at game programming you need to do it yourself and uh, once you're very very sure about these four uh, one of your core domain then you need to work really hard on polishing that one particular uh, core Uh, there are a lot of people who i meet uh, who tell me that i want to become a game developer i know game art i know game design i know game programming that is not how it works these things knowing all these things might help you later in your stage of you know journey when you want to start something of your own when you want to make an independent game of your own maybe soul soul game or you know um collaborating with one of the other uh, guy who is equally interested on your idea having knowledge of all these things together might help you in later stages but to make a career in gaming you need to only focus on one domain because if you come to me or if you come to a, if you go to any company uh, for an interview and you tell them that i know game art i know game design i know game programming take me in that's not how it works if you come to me as like a game artist i'm a game artist this is my portfolio this is the artwork that i've done you will land up a job in game art is is a similar case with game design is a similar case with game programming so you first need to identify your domain you need to first identify what is it that will uh help you build your career what is that skill that you possess among all these four things what is it that you will be happy with 10 years later in your career you know that is what uh you need to choose and then polish your skills on that particular domain and then go and get a job on, in that particular area uh, uh, the gaming sector in india has seen a lot of uh, growth in, in these years so what do you think might be the reason behind this um see the thing is um, like i said there is a graph okay there's a graph which uh, started back in 2010 uh, so i'll tell you what happened was uh, back in 1990 and where uh, these companies like india games nazara these companies were making uh, symbian games you know java games with uh, java and brew language uh, we used to have those keypad phones and they used to make those you know pixel based games on those phones uh from 2000 to 2010 that is what was really popular from 2000 uh 
till the smartphones were out you know uh, but then by the introduction of smartphones in 2010 uh, smartphone games started picking up so like i said 2015 there is an indie wave which came in and you know started uh, um a lot a lot of people started building games on 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 mobile uh at that time only right um if you if you see 2011 to 2020 today okay um the shift is um in 2011 12 when companies started building casual games there were two games which were usually popular one was angry birds the other was uh, candy crush you know these two games started building casual audience in india uh, people in india started playing those games just for fun you know uh, if you compare the situation back in 2000 people used to play in india people used to play games by taking some time out of their day uh, you know daily uh, schedule whatever they used to do they used to take time out like we used to uh, you know do our homeworks and there are there were 3 hours 4 hours where we used to sit and play games on pc or console you know that was the that was the thinking uh, but the shift in 2012 uh, was people played games when they had time why right? so it was like commuting or you know uh having smaller bre- breaks or even while in the restrooms that was the shift uh, of indian audience okay and uh, on top of that introduction to you know angry birds and cra- uh, uh, clash you know clash of clans and uh, games those kind of games so that was the that was the time when casual audience and um uh you the hardcore audience from pc started coming on mobile and started playing mobile games in india uh by the introduction to you know independent waves and everything when 2015 16 came in that is the time when some independent developers started making a game called pubg you know and then it went very viral it got acquired by bigger companies and then it came to india uh and in 2017 that's how that's how pubg started go growing because now people were good in playing casual games people were good in playing hardcore games on mobile they were already satisfied with the games that that they were exploring in india you know so that the audience was already built and pubg came in to serve it as like a you know, like a like a big uh, platter you know so um a lot of people jumped on to pubg uh, a lot of people started playing pubg even the casual audience who used to play candy crush at that time started playing pubg with the same enthusiasm you know so what happened uh, uh, at that time was uh, there was one more thing which was growing uh, during 2017 which was esports uh, so the people who were playing uh, the amount of people and the number of people started increasing but at the same time the people who used to just watch people play also increased so streamers came into place so you see a lot of people playing pubg on youtube or twitch uh grew to you know grew exponentially from 2017 to 2000 you know 20 today uh because people started getting entertained by just watching people play these kind of games and that has you know doubled or even tripled the amount of indian audience uh, indian gamers in india so that that's the gra- graph you know that is a simple graph and that is something which is added up to the overall scenario uh, of india becoming huge in gaming you know these are there are very you know uh, specific things that helped boost the gaming scenario uh, but this is the hard reality uh, and at the same time when then so india is divided into two parts one is the gamers and the other one is game developers right so gamers increased because of games like candy crush angry birds pubg clash of clans all those things and game developers on the other side started realizing that oh this is the time when we should not just focus on the global audience there is a huge amount of audience in india who is also playing games uh you know that is where the game development community started building games for india as well now the problem the only problem the game developers in india have right now is monetization we are not able to monetize really well in india as a market 
we we can get millions of people to play our games uh, by doing right the amount of aso and organic growth but we cannot monetize those users because india still is at a stage where they are not ready to pay you know so all the monetization which is happening is just happening through advertisements so you talked about monetization for games so can you tell us how games make money um so i'll just break down games into two parts one is uh, freemium games and the other one are premium games uh freemium games are basically free to play games uh you can go on app stores download it for free uh start playing the games um and the premium games are the games which can only be uh, downloaded if you pay a certain price okay so they are called as paid games um so in premium games uh the only monetization is the price tag of the game that's it uh you wouldn't find a lot of uh, in app purchases into the game in app elements which you can buy it's just one time fee that you pay and you start playing the game uh this is i'm talking about mobile games okay uh, i'm not talking about pc or console in pc and consoles you will also find one aspect which is uh, downloadable content which is uh once you even purchase the game you can find more content uh, and buy that content and start playing that also um but let's just talk about mobile for now uh in premium games there's one time fee that you have to pay and you start playing the game uh monetization wise when a developer makes a premium game put it on app store if uh he charges uh $1 for that game 30% of that revenue goes to the app stores so app stores even if like any any app store google play or apple app store uh if you buy my game which is $1 30 cents goes to uh, app stores and 70 cents comes to me that's the monetization mechanic for premium games uh for premium games um there are two uh, monetization methods uh one is advertisements uh you see a, lo- a lot of ads in games there are banners at the bottom at the top here yeah, full screen ads there are videos uh in the games rewarded videos that we call uh so that's completely ad monetization and the second part is in app purchases so if i want to you know customize customize my character if i want to buy a new gun if i want to buy a new jacket for my character i just have to spend some bucks and uh, get that element if i have to progress into you know uh, a higher level in the game um so i do those in app purchases so there are only two two models ad monetization and in app purchases um to make it ba- like to keep it balanced a lot of times people um, game designers what they do is they uh, design it in such a way that you know if you don't have money okay you don't have money you spend time on the game and eventually make that amount of money for the developers by uh, by the ad impressions you know so if i if i want to you know have um, a gun which is like a level 4 gun in my game um, i can just go spend 100 rupees and get that gun or i can spend 30 hours in just playing that game and then i get some in app currency uh, in game currency which which are like coins or something and i then am able to buy that gun so it's balanced that way but the amount of time i spend playing that game to have that coins the impressions that i get on the ads i make equal amount of money from those ads uh, that i make from in app purchases so it's balanced that way but these are the two models uh, ad monetization and in app purchases that's it uh, sir there are two major engines which indie studios use uh, unreal or unity so india is more focused on uh, unity engine so why is that and why not unreal um there are a couple of things um the very um the primary reason is is uh, unity as a tool is very easy to use the learning curve is is very very easy uh because you the 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 overall interface um and the way you um in you know uh interact with that tool is quite easy than compared to unreal that's one important very important thing uh and that is the reason a lot of uh, independent uh, developers 
uh, pick up that too. So if you compare both the engines, Unreal versus Unity, Unity is majorly used for mobile games, whereas uh, Unreal is majorly used for PC and console games. Now, if I want to make a mobile game, I cannot use Unreal and optimize it to that level because Unreal is a, a heavy tool. You know, the built-in libraries are also heavier. So it end up having a lot more MBs of space when I, you know, put that game out. So that is one of the reasons the optimization is uh, difficult. The degrading of uh, the visuals is, the, is difficult in Unreal. So that is another reason. Now, uh, why are bigger companies not focusing on Unreal, uh, but are using Unity? There's a very strong reason for that. Uh, the reason is, uh, the developers, the amount of developers in India who are using Unity um, are far more than compared to Unreal. Like if you, if I just have to number it, it's like out of 100 people, 90 people are using Unity and 10 people are using Unreal. Now, as a company, if I start a game uh, using Unreal, um, I, know, I know for sure that it's going to take me like a year to build that game. Unfortunately, if I lose people uh, in between, if I if somebody quits, okay, uh, if the team uh, quits, it would be difficult for me to you know get people on board who are equally talented in Unreal because the amount of developers in India are very very less. That is why people don't prefer uh, using Unreal. The another reason is the forums. The forums of uh, Unity are very active, very. Um, a lot of people are connected in those forums. So there is no point in unity where you get stuck. You know, you can put it out on the forums and you can immediately find a solution for uh, your unity problems. Compared to Unreal, you will struggle a lot to figure out a solution if you're stuck at some point. Obviously, there are a lot of tutorials out there. Um, but if you're starting new, if you're not really experienced in Unreal, it's it, it's it's not a good idea to you know go full fledged with a big game on Unreal. Uh, so that is why um, people prefer to go with Unity. <clears throat> so I like I said, there are multiple reasons. I tried mentioning few, um, but I think at this stage people are getting um, into using others uh, other tools as well. So people are getting into. Uh, using Unreal now. Uh, there are a lot of studios in India who are experimenting. <coughs> I'll still say they are experimenting. They are not full-fledged, uh, you know, making games on Unreal. They are just experimenting with it. Uh, so for any developer, I would just recommend any developer or, or, or a guy who wants to start into game development as a game programmer. It's very important even if you have plans to grow as an unreal artist, unreal uh, programmer, it's very important if you are in India, you need to know Unity uh, as well. Because that can act as like a starting point for your career. You just start as a Unity developer and side by side you can just, you know, explore, self-learn Unreal by yourself. Uh, but do not do not go into a zone where, uh, you know, you you know Unreal only and you want a job as an Unreal programmer only uh, because you will struggle a lot. There is hardly any opportunity in India where you can land up a job as an Unreal programmer. Uh, so it is said that uh, VR is the future for gaming. What's an opinion on this? VR as a future. Okay. Uh, um, VR right now is, uh, VR and AR both uh, are right now doing good in B2B. Uh, they're not good at uh, B2C at all. So just to give you a difference, uh, uh, there are companies who want to, like just for an example, there is a, there is a construction company, say, say there is Loda. You know, now Loda, if Loda wants to uh, uh, showcase their games, uh, showcase their uh, flat, uh, or uh, if Loda wants to showcase their flat uh, to a lot of people, you know, uh, they use AR uh, and VR to just do it online. Uh, so that's business to business. That's how it works. Uh, but building uh, a VR or an AR um, game and putting it out on the Play Store uh, for the users to use it. Um, 
people are not really consuming that because people are not really having those kind of tools with them uh, to start playing those kind of games. So B2C right now is very uh, at a very earlier stage. Uh, but B2B, uh, a lot of companies are using AR and VR to, you know, uh, even if even in today's uh, case, right, uh, because of the lockdown situation, um, the, there are a lot of events which are not happening. Okay, there are a lot of events which are not happening. Uh, the conferences which used to happen, the lot of uh, meetups which used to happen, and everything right now is happening at a uh, in a. Uh, in virtual uh, virtual worlds, you know, um, they are happening, uh, but they are happening at a, uh, you know, people are just uh, sitting at their home and experimenting with those things. So B two B, I think, uh, is doing good. B two C, I don't see any uh, future for for next three years at least. It's it's just going to take a like, take a while for B two C to grow in VR and AR. So um, this is a question from Vaibhav Gupta. Uh, no, we are not making anything which is quite uh, similar to PUBG Mobile, um, because uh, we 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 work in a different space. We are working on hyper casual games right now. Uh, making a game like PUBG will uh, end up, uh, you know, spending around one year uh, in building a game like that um, and a polish like that. Uh, also, a game like PUBG costs a lot more than what uh, we all think. It is. Um, it it at least will take uh, around two to three crores of uh, Indian rupees to make a game like that. Um, because right now at this stage, even bigger mobile games are costing around a crore uh, to develop. <coughs> and one one year is uh, is what I think uh, should take to polish a game like that. Um, character game character design ke baare mein thoda bataiye, Yogesh. Uh, uh, game character design. See, basically, what happens is uh, game designer first writes a character. Game designer first gives thoda baat uske upar, uh, you know, kaisa dikhne wala, kaisa hoga, story kya hogi, uske background story kya hogi. Wo sab likhta hai. And based on those guidelines, jo artist hota hai, usko design karta hai. Uh, mostly, badi companies mein concept artist hota hai, jo ye design karta hai. But uh, chote companies mein jahan pe concept artist nahi hota, wahan pe jo game artist hota hai, wohi ye sab karta hai. <coughs> Also, concept artist जो होता है ना वो सिर्फ सिर्फ concepts बनाता है सिर्फ जो artwork बनाता है जो 2D होता है जो paper पे होता है जो mat पे होता है जो digital paintings होते हैं so वो process होता है game designer का character को लिखता है concept artist उसको बनाता है उसके visualization और game designer के guidelines को follow करके uh, what about when the game is launched on the Play Store? Does the developer get money? Uh, when the game is uh, launched on Play Store, you don't get money. Uh, they, uh, you get money when, uh, when uh, the game, if it's a premium game, if it's a paid game, uh, you get money when the when the game is bought. Uh, uh, and if you if it's an ad based game, you get money when you uh, when people start playing the game and there are a lot of impressions of the game. Uh, you get a lot of ad impressions. Um, or in app purchases, jabi hote, tabi tabi tumko paisa milta hai. Uh, and usually, play stores tend to give you money uh, on monthly basis. Uh, bank account connected hota, so you just get money over there. Um, how e sports companies work? Why they pay for gaming? Uh, that's kind of tricky right now. It's like an Uber strategy, Ola strategy. Jabi log, uh, you know, zada. Um, Kamani rehte, but they were spending on it to build that kind of base and audience. Esports companies are right now doing that. They're building audience with them. Um, uh, every esports company right now is uh, owning teams in particular sections. So US make team, Unki India make team, and then they just have boot camps for these teams. So sare log ek saath rehte. They, they practice for 17, 18 hours a day uh, on that particular game. So. Uh, if you know in India there is entity gaming, they have you know they have a boot camp in Mumbai itself where there are like all these six seven guys who actually are in a team are there and they practice uh, and then they compete in these tournaments. Uh, it's basically funded. Uh, a lot of uh, things are right now funded. Um, they make money by brand sponsorships. So uh, other entity gaming, yeah. So there is a Red Bull which comes on board and every time the uh, the player uh, is seen. If you know Ankit Pant, who is uh, a CSGO player, 
in india he's the he's the red bull uh, artist so when whenever he streams a game there's always a red bull can or a red bull cap or a red bull fridge um, in in his camera in in the scene that he he, he can be seen so um, that's how the the esports companies are making money right now with the prize money only and the brand sponsorships these are the two things which they are making money from esports tournament is sponsored by different companies companies pay for the expense so that their product is advertised in a big event okay this is just the answer uh rohit reddy uh, what are what are hyper casual games uh, so hyper casual games are uh, are snackable games we call it snackable games because they are very small they can have just a single mechanics the best examples are flappy bird uh, or the games from catch up uh, which used to be very popular back in times right now there's there are companies like voodoo uh, c games uh, quali homa games Uh, all these companies are making smaller games which are you know uh, recently there was a there was a huge successful game called uh, soap cutting which was from india it's just an uh, it's just a game which gives you an asmr feeling you know uh, just a satisfaction feeling uh, smaller games quick games uh, they don't have any progression as such uh, but they are just to you know uh, kill your time uh, these those are hyper casual games but uh, um, trust me uh, making a hyper casual games is much much more difficult than making a casual game thank you for all uh, the answers okay uh, so how, how is your studios pipeline to work uh, so what we do is um, whenever we plan of making a new game uh, there is a lot of analytics uh, research that goes in uh, we keep on consistently um, researching about what is the current trends what are the uh, mechanics that are working and there is always some sort of conceptualization some sort of idea that we have in our mind always uh, so something uh, uh, on those on, on x lines that we want to make you know uh, and then we try and integrate both the things uh, the trend uh, the things which are working well uh, the kind of audience that we want to uh, attempt so we decide that particular concept and then we go ahead when we go ahead with that um, usually there are a lot of uh, uh, brainstorming sessions that uh, you know detail out the concept so we start scribbling the idea on paper uh the idea uh, is then detailed out to us to such a level that we know the game well before we even start the game so everything right from win scenario lose scenario how many levels are going to be uh, what are the characters what is the background story everything is just documented in game design documents first uh and that game design document keeps on updating you know uh throughout the game phase uh once the once the game design document is finalized we start the production um we go into the production phase wherein the artists and the programmers are explained about the game and then they par- parallelly start making the game uh, so artists keep on you know making artworks uh for the game the 3d 2d uh, all the all the artwork and the programmer starts with the, the prototyping of the game uh the so game designer's job is to be in sync with both the teams uh, so the artwork uh, is going as per required or the programmer is doing what is expected to uh, so that's um, that's that's the whole uh, you know uh, uh, flow workflow you know where the game designer keeps an eye on both the things uh so it goes on uh, till we reach an alpha stage where we have a playable build and then we share that build with uh, the team internally we see for the you know we do some sort of play testing sessions and then uh, iteratively it goes on on, on and on till the time we you know fix all the bugs and get to a gold stage where we can launch it so that's how that's how it works that's that's the production cycle um that we have Vibhav Gupta, uh, will we make a PC game? Uh, we were we we were already working on a PC game called Mukti. Uh, if you uh, get a chance to see Mukti, uh, it's a it's a it's it was one of the biggest game which was supposed to come from India. It's right now on halt because of other commitments that we have. But it's a PC and console game that we were working on. Uh, this game was based on uh, one of the biggest social aspect, uh, which was human trafficking, which is very huge in northern uh, parts of India. Um, and it's like um, based in a, based in an Indian museum. Um, 
so it's like four five hours of gameplay we were working on uh, we completed 60 70 percent of the game development but uh, right now it's uh, on hold what makes the game marketable and so can we separately sell game assets online if yes how you can sell game assets separately there are a lot of uh, uh, platforms for that uh, one of the biggest one is uh, unity asset store you can just go and put your uh, assets on unity asset store pri price it and then you can make money from those uh, what makes a game marketable is market uh, um, uh, it's it's not one aspect. There are a lot of things which are involved. Um, I cannot exactly justify what is it, but uh, if if your uh, if your uh, research is very strong, if you keep uh, doing analytics and do research of what is going on, what is the trend, and what are things which are working. Um, and along with that, you have a unique concept, which is uh, which people have not seen. Your game automatically becomes marketable. It people see people want to play games which they didn't see. If, if you have just if you just have clones out there, uh, people wouldn't be interested in playing it. You know, um, but uh, organically you can grow with the support of the original game. Uh, but you wouldn't have that great of an audience uh, to make money from it. Uh, sir, I am more into VFX and I really wanted to work as a game VFX artist. So what steps uh, should I take to achieve my plan? I am currently working on my portfolio for VFX. Uh, Husseini, uh, VFX in, uh, in gaming is not, uh, is not uh, that huge as of now. Um, if, you are, if you are really passionate about VFX particularly, um, what you have to do is just uh, you know create a kick-ass portfolio uh, and for bfx i don't think uh, a, a, a static digital or a, or a physical portfolio works i don't think it works uh, you need to have show reels you need to have good video uh, show reels of your work um, create as much as you can uh, but only put out you know five to six uh, good stuff in your show reels uh, once you're ready with that you know you can approach a lot of um, movie production houses because they do a lot of uh, vfx uh, movie production houses um, there are companies like pixion um, the the see all the companies uh, which you know help in vfx for films uh, any any big movie uh, you'll see the credits of uh, the vfx companies over there just approach them directly with your portfolio uh, to start your career as a fresher or an intern or a trainee or whatever see uh, in any career i think important is to get the entry point if you can get that entry point uh, even if it's unpaid it's great because you do unpaid for three months and then you have a bullet on your on your resume that you have worked on something which is very, very legit, which is commercial, you know, then you can go to a, another bigger company and say that you've worked on something like this, you'll end up getting a good opportunity. Which all languages are necessary to learn for developing a game? Uh, Oniza, right now, uh, if you just focus on C sharp, uh, you're sorted. Uh, just focus on C sharp. Um, as a programming language uh, if you have knowledge about object oriented programming concepts which we call as oops which is the basic of programming it's it's a starting point then it's great but along with that c sharp uh, just focus on c sharp just focus on uh, you know doing some online courses on c sharp and get to know about it then self learn um, self learn programming uh, in games uh, using those kind of uh, languages there are a lot of video tutorials. There are a lot of uh, Udemy courses, Coursera courses, which you can just buy and just go through it, implement them in your tools. So what should be included in portfolio or showreel of a game designer is it necessary to learn programming. Uh, like I said, it's not necessary to learn programming for a game designer, Shabir. Um, in terms of showreel, um, you don't need a sh you you don't need a showreel for a for a game designer. Uh, you need but you need uh, a, a Behance profile or something which can just talk about stories. You can just create your own stories, visualize your own characters, something like that. So you can just create a portfolio with stories um, or, or the game concepts. Uh, but uh, the crux of cracking a game designer interview uh, interview is uh, when you go for an interview, 
um, uh, and sit in front of an interviewer, what you can do is you can dissect a, a popular game. So you just take Mario, uh, or just take Prince of Persia, uh, whatever game that you like, just dissect it and put it in front of uh, the interviewer. Uh, tell them what exactly has been done in terms of game design in that particular game that you love. It just shows the interviewer that you're very much interested in game designing. You know the lingos, you know the objects, uh, you know the you know uh, terms of game designing, uh, and that's enough to land a job. Uh, so, sir, uh, as you said earlier, you also have a YouTube channel. So, how did the idea of game? Yeah, firstly, go and subscribe my channel, man. Uh, the idea is, is, is uh, I uh, like I said I used to I used to do uh, YouTube earlier, um, but that was just a, just uh, for uh, some other concepts. Uh, I used to do YouTube earlier, but that was just for uh, for uh, fun. Um, and like I said, I used to, uh, I used to do theater, uh, I do theater, you know, so I, what I th thought was I should just combine, um, two things to, to, you know, teach people about gaming. I, th I, what I thought was there is a huge, huge gap. There's a huge gap. Uh, wherein people really don't know uh, about gaming and gaming industry. And since I was in the industry and I knew how to do uh, a lot of stuff, uh, I thought I'll just put out um, whatever I can uh, on YouTube. I'll just put out um, whatever things I can share with people. Um, I I love talking. I, I, I love uh, sharing experiences. I love motivating people. Uh, so I just thought of, you know, uh, putting out some content uh, on YouTube that can help people to build their own careers. Um, because, uh, you know, gaming as a career, one thing which I uh, feel is, and I, even I went to the, through that phase is, uh, it's a very challenging uh, where you, you just don't, you just don't fight with, uh, with, you know, uh, yourself to get into gaming, you need to fight with the society, you need to fight with your parents, uh, you need to fight with a lot of uh, things to get into a creative field in India. Uh, and there are ways to do that, you know, there are right ways to do that. And I, I, my objective was to bring out that ways out to the people so that it would be very easier for them to, you know, figure out their ways into gaming. Uh, because people really don't know, firstly, uh, what the domains are, what how can they start career in these things, and secondly, how to convince their parents, how to get started into this uh, thing. So that was my idea of getting onto YouTube, very frankly. I'm already a subscriber. Uh, your uh, interviews and career advice videos has helped me a lot personally. Uh, so, you. sir, uh, can you tell us the challenges that you face? while uh, running the studio um this is the biggest challenge uh, so it was also gradual like um, in the beginning phases there were different challenges uh, right now i still have challenges but these challenges are much more um you know bigger and different from what i used to earlier i used to have uh, challenges of you know uh, i didn't know what a ca why a ca was important for the studio why i didn't know how to you know there are a lot there are, there were minor things which uh, hit me in the initial stages of the company uh, i didn't know how to you know uh, how to do people management a lot at that time uh, but then uh, uh, overall the challenges you can say were at the company level itself not not how to make games like making games was like uh, we can do that blindfolded like we, it was that uh, for us because we, we we were making games earlier also so uh, making games was not a challenge uh, the the biggest um, challenge in the initial stages was visibility um, when in 2011 when we started um, there were only bigger companies uh, only the bigger companies who were you know uh, getting their games featured on app stores. There were app stores which used to feature their games. 
you know, this was 2012, 13, when the actual app stores were uh, doing really good. Um, so that was a challenge. Visibility, I don't know how to do it. How are games ke feature ho rahe, hamare kyun nahi ho rahe, aur humko ye lagta tha ki, you know, you just make a game, put it up on the app store and it will get featured. People will discover it and people will get millions of downloads uh, directly when we put it up on the app store. Uh, unfortunately, people still think that way, but it's not the fact. You need to do user acquisition. You need to, for featuring, or for a simple example, if I have to be, give about feature, featuring, right? You need to, when your game is in development, you need to go and meet, you need to talk online uh, with, uh, with the teams from the Google and Apple app stores. So there are teams which exist. You know, there are people from Google and Apple who see your games, who check your games, who review your games, and then they decide to put your games as a featured game, you know, on the front page of the app stores. That's the process that nobody knew at that time. So there were different challenges and different stages. Visibility was one challenge at that time. 2015 was the time when I, you know, when I actually understood the overall aspects of visibility, of user activity position of uh, why is it important to go to uh, international events um, so that was the time when we made skatelander skatelander in 2015 was one of the biggest games from india uh, the game got around 3 million downloads and they were completely organic uh, we got nominated at casual connect singapore we went to singapore uh, we got nominated at casual connect usa so we went to usa as well uh, showcased our game over there. We got an international publisher at that time in 2015, and we were just four people sitting in my apartment making games. You know, um, that was that was again kind of uh, exploration, learning a lot of stuff. Um, so at that time, uh, we we went uh, when we went to uh, USA. We we were the very first studio from India who got an international publisher deal, which no no company in India at that time was able to achieve. Uh, you know, so there were a lot of challenges. I cannot you know tell you one specific challenge, but every stage had different challenges. Right now, uh, if you ask me, in the last two years, what biggest challenge I had was uh, raising funds for the company was the biggest challenge. Uh, and, and a lot of studios in India face this issue right now is raising funds because uh, India may have been a case study one year uh, in hardcore gaming. Like there are companies who make casino games, card games, which are um, which have raised money. There are companies who make real money gaming platforms like Mo Mobile Premier League or Pocket League or Binzo who have raised money. Uh, but you don't see any, uh, you know, independent developer making good uh, standalone games, which have got fundings. So that's another challenge. Uh, so yeah, challenge uh, challenges are there every day, uh, but they just grow in scale and uh, you know, uh, level of difficulty. I can say. So what do you look for in a candidate other than their portfolio? Uh, I'll be very honest. I really don't uh, bother about the qualification at all. Uh, for me, um, the skills are important, uh, but also with that skill, uh, skill is not hundred uh, percent. Um, for us uh, in the studio, we we believe that skills are just forty percent of overall you. Sixty uh, percent is uh, is your behavior, uh, is the humility, is the gratitude, which I'm very shocked. Uh, and <laughs> I, I like, it's very unfortunate to say that this generation lacks both the things. Um, and I don't want to, you know, you know, a stereotype it or you know, generalize it, but, uh, that's what we've been seeing in, in, in current age. Um, the people that we meet, the current generation that we meet, they have zero gratitude towards uh, the opportunities that they get. They have zero humbleness, no humility at all. Uh, and we need people who possess these kind of qualities, uh, who have gratitude, who, who are very humble, uh, 
who are good learners who can listen to you to understand and not to argue you know so these are a few of the qualities uh, that we think so for example you know um, if i work with a guy who is super talented super super talented who can do a lot of you know magical things uh, in his work uh, but he is a very bad um, he has a very bad professional behavior i would not prefer working with that guy um, but i would really prefer with a guy who is you know decent in work but is very good in his behavior and other stuff i'll prefer working with that guy so that's that's one thing that i i personally look into people <clears throat> So there are a lot of students who want to start their own company. So, uh, what are the tips that you can give for them? Um, I think uh, this approach. Uh, I'm I may be wrong, but I think this approach is very wrong. Uh, very very wrong. Um, see, everybody right now is just under that you know fad where they just want to create a single. a standalone company and then make a successful game make millions of dollars it's it doesn't work that way um for anybody who wants to start his own company i would just give you one advice is that at least for a year or two years work with a company which can teach you a lot of stuff which you have no idea about uh do that and then start your own company uh starting your company is not at all difficult it's just registering your name and you just started the other day uh, it's no difficult at all but the problem is people don't understand the dynamics behind the gaming business they don't know people uh, there are people there are majority of people who don't know how to you know monetize their games uh, they are talking about making their own, starting their own company uh people uh, ask me how to register their company even before they know how to publish the game on their app stores this is not how it works so i would just like to you know say that you should first at least one or two years work with some company to understand these things or uh, learn those things and then you know uh then even when you are at a stage where you want to start a company don't start a company you know what you do is uh you just make one game uh put it out in the app store uh, and just try making one rupee out of that game just learn how to make one rupee out of that game because starting a company making a game is not going to make you millionaire making a game that can make you money is going to make you a millionaire you know uh that's how that's how it works in the industry so you just have to focus on because when you try and do that uh, you will get to understand and know all the aspects of game development because people like i said i keep on seeing this people just think that making a game is 100% of that job it's not it's just 20% of the overall game development publishing your game is another aso doing aso so that you can get organic downloads for your game is important a user acquisition spending money on your games to get the roi the return of investments is important uh testing out your so uh, games through soft launch testing out your day one retentions your uh, cpi rates of your games your arpu average revenue per user per day is important your session lens is important analytics for your games is important so if you just focus on one game which can teach you all these things in the process then you are ready to start your own company according to you the design what are the different sources from which they can learn this subject game design uh, there are a lot of good books uh, out there uh, you can just find those books on amazon as well uh, for game design to understand the like just the lingos of game design uh, there is nothing that can actually teach you game design it's it's like acting you know you just get references for acting you nobody can teach you acting it just has to be there in you you know is the same thing you can just get references of what game design is what are the lingos how to write a gdd all the stuff but visualization is one thing uh, which you need to have 
in you you know you need to be able to think about outer worlds now because the challenges in game design are huge uh you all of a sudden what happens is you are working in a company just for an example you're working in a company and the management tells you to make a game on greek mythology but you have no idea what greek mythology is so you need to be a good learner you need to be an avid reader you need to read a lot of stuff you need to research a lot of stuff so all these things if you just polish these skills you should be able to you know uh, consider yourself that you can you know try going get, try and get a job in game design once you get an entry point you you learn a lot of stuff uh, while you are while you are live you know working on live projects but uh, just to learn it it's it's just reference pointers that you can get from books from videos um but th- these are just interpersonal skills that you need to build uh the the core important skills that I, that i said the visualization or communication and documentation uh one more important thing i feel is uh, it's it's like uh it's like consuming information a lot um i think for a game designer it's very important to read a lot of books uh to consume a lot of media media you know so um i i personally prefer watching a lot of movies watching watching series watching world movies uh because they help me understand a lot of other aspects of the world um and eventually it's it's just observation you just need to observe a lot of people how they work how they function you know that's how you can visualize more stuff uh what does an artist do what does an artist what does a painter actually do painter never paints something which he has never seen you know he, there's always a reference point there's always something that he has seen somewhere which comes out in his art it's the same thing with the game designer you need to keep observing a lot of stuff around you to you know just uh get into that zone so uh i think this has really been a very exciting and wonderful uh, online session uh, i think you must have answered web of nothing less than 30 or 30 odd questions today so that is i think a big effort um and uh, uh, i i think one of the things that you mentioned is really very important uh, which is uh, regarding being uh, you know having humility so people can learn from online mediums people can learn a lot of things but in the end what ultimately matters in a company when you are working with a group of people is soft skills and uh, that is something which people really need to understand before we step into the industry and uh, the second thing which i really liked was uh, the thing that you mentioned about having an artistic view so i think all the educational institutions like us uh, our, our our job is to you know give students the resources uh so that they can develop that own artistic thinking in them by means of you know giving them uh, exposure to working on various projects talking to people like you stuff like that so i think all in all it is a very uh, you know combined effort the education industry and the gaming industry when they work more closely together probably we'll be able to have much better game designers concept artists and programmers so uh, i think uh, uh this was a very fruitful session uh, i i'm sure all students will agree with this and uh, on this note um, let us uh, you know <laughs> it's time to depart now and uh, probably some other session some other day uh, so thank you so very much uh, webhof for joining us and uh, answering so many questions and you know your time your efforts are really going to help us a lot